This is a Lexmark E260D black and white laser printer. But of course there's more to it than meets the eye. This is a bare copper PCB on an aluminum carrier. And this is a PCB design for my next attempt at making an electromagnetic 7 segment display clock. I'm going to print that out on the Lexmark E260D in the highest possible quality and with black and white and filled contours. And I'm also going to stretch the print by 1% in Y direction because apparently my particular printer shrinks the print for some reason. And fire! There's a small notch in the carrier and a photoelectric fork sensor for consistent Y offset. The toner gets deposited on the PCB perfectly but there's no more fuser on that printer because it's designed for paper, of course, and it doesn't have enough oomph for heating up anything on this bare copper board. If I'd put this board in the agent right now, the toner would just be washed away. So we need to fuse it somehow. The easiest way to accomplish that is acetone vapor. Basically I'm just putting two tablespoons of acetone in an old cooking pot along with three old ICs as spacers so that the PCB doesn't touch the acetone. Then I'm resting it inside, covering it up and letting it sit for maybe half an hour. That's about it. You just got yourself a perfect layer of edge resist on your PCB with far less material than the good old toner transfer method. It's now ready to be submerged in your favorite agent. Here are some more boards I've made with this direct printing technique. On the right there is one that's been etched already and it turned out perfectly. On the left there is another perfect example because it's narrow and centered. That's important. The second from the left has a couple of problems as you might be able to tell if you look really hard. If not, here's a better example. The butt area, or generally the center of the PCB, is nicely covered, deeply black with a lot of toner deposited there. But the outer edges on the left and right side are always a bit faded. The reason for that is probably a combination of two phenomena. First, the edges of the boards are scoring the photoconductor roll. And in that scored area, it doesn't work as well anymore. And second, even high quality single sided boards from Bungard, for example, are slightly curved. And the photoconductor roll is absolutely stiff, so it doesn't follow contours. Another problem toner dust. Once you use that thing, it's everywhere and it's there to stay. 
it's even worse than tipex but my main gripe is about alignment for double-sided boards it just doesn't work you can try to print an outline on the carrier or drill the holes first and align those or you can be stubborn and retry until the first few holes line up but then you realize that the printer has stretched your print by a couple of millimeters so that the distant holes don't line up anymore that's no fun so either my printer is broken or i did something wrong or this technique is just not suitable for making double-sided boards which i don't think because on the Instructables page where this came from there were a lot of positive comments about double-sided boards and that leads me to believe that with a little bit more effort reasonable alignment can be achieved. Here's one of the most important things I've learned way too late. The surface you want to print on should be grounded and I'm doing that by connecting it to the carrier with some copper sticky tape by 3M with conductive glue. That stuff's not cheap, but the roll will probably last forever. The toner particles are more likely to stick to a grounded surface because they have been indirectly charged to a high voltage on the photoconductor roll. The modifications have all been documented very nicely by Instructables user M. Lerman and so I'm going to keep this very short and instead post a link in the description. This is an 8-pin 80-tiny microprocessor on a piece of protoboard and it is responsible for simulating all the sensors that have been removed. Simulating, as in emitting the right signal at a certain time after the notch in the carrier has passed the optoelectric fork sensor. The original assembler program is available on the Instructables page, of course, and I also made a AVRC program for Mega 3 to 8 microcontrollers because that was what I had available at the time. This is the new manual infeed mechanism, which is basically a spring-loaded shaft with rollers. The original Instructable called for some aluminum rollers, which are not available in Germany, so I used ball bearings. Overall, a very satisfying project. Can highly recommend it, especially if you are into fine-pitched single-sided boards. Thanks for watching.